Hi guys, how are you doing today? Hope you are all having a sunny day. So, are you ready for new crazy stories I've prepared for you? Let's go to the first one, about a crazy mother who stole her daughter's wedding dress and is keeping it a hostage. Enjoy the stories guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm the maid of honor in a wedding in October. The bride and her mother do not get along. Her mother isn't even invited to the wedding after telling everyone she doesn't approve and some other awful things. After picking out and putting a deposit down on a wedding dress, the bridal store did not call the bride to inform her that the dress was available for pickup. Instead, her mother drove down there, finished paying for the dress. I'm not sure the total amount paid by each person, but the dress was around $1,500 and is now holding the dress hostage, locked in a closet in her house. Does the bride have any legal recourse? The shop essentially sold her dress to someone else. Is it theft by the mother since the bride paid the deposit, even though her mother finished paying it off? My first thought is a charge back on the credit card for the deposit, since she didn't receive what she paid for. But I'm not an expert here. Bridal shop either needs to apply the bride's deposit to another dress, or refund the deposit. They sold the dress to the wrong person, not the bride's problem. I split with my fiance. She is now expecting me to pay 6K to cover all the wedding expenses. Her rationale is, since I made the decision to cancel and split, I should pay everything. Here is the list she sent over. $1,000 venue reservation. We both paid 1K for the reservation, so she wants me to also pay her half. $250 wedding sign, $500 wedding shower deposit, $2,150 wedding dress, $165 engagement photos, $215 save the dates, $1,484 wedding day photo deposit. She is not including the money I spent on the DJ deposit in any of this and just expects me to roll over and pay. I offered to go half on everything, since I thought that was fair, but now I don't know what the best course of action is. Half is more than reasonable, in my opinion, but OP should be warned that some states do have legislation that would allow OP's ex to file suit to claim damages, since OP is the one that caused said damages. So she could lawyer up and go after OP in court. Although maybe not for only $6,000, it depends and the damages would have been demonstrable, i.e., non-refundable deposits, etc. In particular, the wedding dress. Is it actually already paid for? Has she tried selling it? Kind of doesn't matter what happens to that if she's paid for it in full. But if she does lawyer up and sue, OP can also petition the court to get her ring back. So my point is, OP should be taking it somewhat seriously. OP is the cause of the damages. OP is likely going to be footing the bill for a portion if not a majority chunk of this. Unless OP can prove somehow that the reason he called off the wedding was somehow due to something she did. Short version of a rather long story is, my fiancé opened a bank account when she was 15, with her mother as a co-signer. She's currently 22 and never took her mom off the account. She's a full-time college student, so like, we're not talking five or six figures here but she kept all of her money in that account. Today, she logged into her account and saw each one of her accounts, savings, reserve, and checking, was $16,000. There was no transaction posting. I'm referring to my fiance's mom and grandma as just mom and grandma here for simplicity. We call the bank. I had to do a lot of talking because needless to say, this caused a 22-year-old college student a lot of emotional duress and find out there is a legal lien on her accounts. The bank refuses to elaborate any further and only provided us with a phone number to call. I googled it and this is a PA debt management law firm. Fiance's accounts alone total negative $48,000. Mom has a checking and savings account which are linked to fiance's as she never took her off after turning 18 that are another negative $32,000. Their total accounts are all negative, in excess of 70 grand. Checking, savings, everything has been absolutely wiped out. Mom is blaming Grandma as she is in a nursing home and likely owes them money. Grandma is on Mom's second accounts, 
but not on fiancé's accounts. I have a friend who works for this bank who said they can only indicate mom is the source of the lien, as they're only going to lien accounts with the debtor's name on it. I'm not here for the this is why you don't do shared bank accounts unless it's a spouse lecture. I get it. Believe me, my fiancé now gets it after this rather painful lesson. What we need to know is, can I 100% say fiancé is not the source of the lien? She's 22. No one's going to entrust her with 70k to default on in the first place. Is she just SOL out of that money? Do we call the law office number provided ourselves? Should we talk to an attorney ourselves first? Can we force the bank in any way to disclose who the person actually with the lien on it is? Mom or grandma in this case? I have a feeling one of the two isn't being truthful. And obviously here it's relevant to us. Thank you. OP's fiancé needs to consult with an attorney immediately. She should not be taking advice from the bank, or from mom, or from grandma. If the lien is against mom, and that's almost certainly the case, given that grandma is not on this particular account, that money is likely gone. Since mom was on the account, that money was legally hers as well. Background I'm 17 in the state of Michigan. My father died in 2016 and was a very wealthy man. They never married. To sum it up, my mother set up a new bank account for me a few months ago, and I saw that there was already an account under my social security that was pre-existing. This account receives a deposit of about $2,000 monthly from SSA TREAS 310 SEC. I know this money is left to me from my father. I'm unaware exactly what it is from. I'm assuming the SEC stands for Security and Exchange Commission, which in that case means this money is probably inherited dividends from a mutual bond, stocks that my father bought. Otherwise, it's death benefits. My dad never wrote a will, but his only two kin are my adult sister, 30, and I. So when he passed, it was understood that his wealth would go to primarily me. My dad also never went to court with my mother for child support since he was more than happy to financially support us by his own free will. But now, every time I bring up this mystery money to my mother, she gets incredibly dodgy. Her and I already have problems, so I never wanted to press it. However, if this is truly SEC money and not child support or something like that, I'm afraid that she's blatantly stealing from me. It's accumulated to over $100,000 at this point, and it's deposited into my social security, not hers. What do I do? Seek legal counseling? Should I call Social Security? Talk to my bank. I live in Michigan. Are there laws saying she can do this? When a parent dies with a child under 18, the SSA pays out benefits until they are 18. OP's mom has been receiving that $2,000 a month since her father passed away. If it's accumulated to $100,000, then OP's mom isn't spending much of it, and it's likely she spent the money towards taking care of OP. She does have a right to the money, because it's survivor's benefits, meant to help pay for things OP needs. Housing, food, clothes, etc. So I think OP should just talk to her about it without being accusing. Like saying, hey mom, when we were at the bank I noticed that there was another account with my social security number on it, and I'm wondering what's up with that. Is that money for me? My now husband and I got married three days ago. We are gay men in our early 30s. Right before we said our vows, his ex-girlfriend stalked into the church and started screaming that my husband was marrying a man because she showed him that he can't handle a strong woman. She stalked up and started screaming in my face about all sorts of personal things. To give an idea, she said in front of our families that my husband's pee was too small to do anything. It honestly felt like out of a movie. My brother finally managed to get her to leave, but after that, everything was really thrown off. We made it through the ceremony, and when we got to the reception, around half the guests left early, approaching us and apologizing, but saying that they felt uncomfortable with the dramatics. Is there anything I can do legally? Husband is embarrassed and upset. OP should file a restraining order against her based on her actions. If she made claims that could be considered threats, OP may be able to file charges based on those. But from the sound of it, if OP gets a restraining order, she will probably duck off and not bother OP again. 
One important thing to note is that unless she has a decent chunk of assets, it's not really worth suing her. OP might research whether he can get her for trespassing if it was a private event and she was told to leave. My bat crap mother, who did not approve of the marriage and is now permanently cut out of my life, called all the vendors for our wedding and canceled. We did not learn of this until the night before. She got everything, the venue, catering, flowers, photographer, the cake, etc. The day was a disaster and my wife an unconsolable mess. But all that aside, the vendors are refusing to at least give us back our deposits. My mother did not have any authorization to cancel our agreements on our behalf, and since my wife and I did not cancel, but still did not get what we contracted for, we would at the very least like our deposits back. Quite frankly, we want it all back. This is several thousands of dollars we lost. Do we have any recourse against the vendors? My mom is broke as hell, so even if pursuing her were an option, I know I'd never see a cent. Yes, OP has recourse against the vendors for breach of contract. At minimum, OP is entitled to his deposit back, but OP should look into whether he had other damages. The vendors will say, but we thought she was calling on your behalf. They might have thought that, but unless OP actually did things to make them believe she had authority, example, allowing her to make the arrangement for OP or asking them to deal with his mom, then that's not a winning defense for them. They can go after OP's mom. OP's mom. Good call on cutting her out. Yes, it's hard, but that's way, way, way beyond normal mother-in-law, daughter-in-law tension. And OP absolutely has to side with his wife on that. What on earth can I do? My wife is devastated. The photographer has lied and made excuses every couple of weeks with moving deadlines. And I sent it last week, you didn't get them? We received our sneak peek, which was only like 25 pictures, but it didn't include any pictures of the bride and her family. I understand a refund is a given, even though she has not offered it. She offered a free family shoot. Get the duck out of here. Is there legal recourse on getting more than our refund back due to the impact this will cause and the fact we will never have pictures of our wedding day? Even the refund is going to have to go to court, I feel. The photographer made sure to mention in the apology message that she is working three jobs and falling behind just trying to make ends meet. I'd recommend that OP calmly speak to the photographer about what steps she's taken thus far to recover the images. Unless she lost, destroyed the physical device that the images were on, it is likely that some if not all images could be recovered. Even if they're on a computer that's bricked, a lot of people don't realize that unless overwritten, data is usually recoverable. It may be that OP could work out bringing in a specialist to recover the files. Edit. I have reached out to a lawyer. There is definitely more to this story. Something just isn't right, but I don't know what happened on her side of things. She has made so many excuses along the way. She even claimed at one point that she mailed the USB drive. It never came. And when we told her it never arrived, she claimed she would have to do the work all over again, but she would ASAP. She was young and fairly cheap, but not like $200 cheap. It was around $1,000 total. Everything has felt off the whole way, after the wedding that is. She was great that whole time, but I never expected this. She claims that this morning she was trying to make us a new jump drive, and that's when she realized that just last night, her whole system corrupted and she lost most of her files for the last year. All of her projects for all of her clients. It sounded pretty insane to me.